they're facing the number one team in the nation. They have been tough. They seemed loose yesterday when we talked to them. They were ready to go and face this extremely talented team in Oklahoma. So Mia Yule will be the first to step in. This is the first time we've seen her since April 22nd. She's been out with a broken hand. First two pitches are strikes from G. Juarez. So much postseason experience for her. Of course, started her career at Arizona State. It was an all Big 12 second team selection this year at Oklahoma. Three pitches and a strikeout for G. G. Juarez goes right after Ewell, hammering the strike zone early in the count, and then gets the chase pitch, the rise ball up in the zone. And Ewell's got no chance to catch up to this one. A little bit late, and obviously the height that of this pitch, just not in her wheelhouse to make contact on that one. So in steps her sister, Aaliyah Yule, who is a senior for Morgan State. Four pitches, four strikes for Juarez. That's something really important that we heard from Morgan State. They're gonna have to make some adjustments because they're not used to seeing the velocity that Oklahoma's gonna throw at them today. They don't get to see that enough in conference play, so they gotta be ready to shorten up and just try and make contact. And that was a big focus for them. We just got to put bat on ball, got to simplify, not try and do too much. Understand that we got to be on time first and foremost. And you got to make that adjustment quickly. Aaliyah Yule, member of the MEAC All Tournament team. Hitting 307. She leads them in hits with 35 this season, is on a six game hit streak. Doing a nice job on this at bat, fouling off some of G's better pitches. Fouled off an outside rise ball and an inside one on that last pitch. Trying to get her barrel level for that pitch up in the zone. <laughs> Laid off of that one, two and two. It's a really nice take, especially on a pitch that a little bit of an off speed. Rise ball up in the zone, but only coming in at 59 miles an hour. Kinsey Hansen handles it behind the plate. Oklahoma has so much history in this tournament. This is their 27th straight appearance. Of course, they've been to 13 Women's College World Series. They were the runner-up in 2019 to UCLA, the last time we had a tournament. Ebers steps in on the right side. Sophomore first baseman. have been some better at bats these last two hitters facing G. Juarez after she went three pitches, three strikes to Mia Yule, the leadoff. 
Yeah, they're putting some good hats, good quality swings on some tough pitches from G. Juarez. I think that's a good sign moving forward. Just trying to get to the ball with your barrel. Find ways to foul it off and battle as much as you can. Strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning for G. Number one team in the country. G. Juarez leading the way. Going three up, three down in the first. Sooners coming up to bat. The first three hitters in this lineup are all top ten in the nation in home runs this year. Yeah, and Tiare Jennings is going to start off in the leadoff spot. We've seen Jada Coleman there recently, but Tiare is getting the nod today. And for a freshman, I mean, her presence and her maturity at the box has been so obvious since the first second you see her this season. She's so talented, but she brings in that right body language and approach at the plate to be successful. Jocelyn Allo on deck behind Jennings as she'll get the first look at Runlet. Good strike. Tiare Jennings, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. That is Oklahoma's sixth straight Conference Freshman of the Year. <laughs> to right field goes Jennings. It's rolling to the wall. She's looking for two. Plenty of time to get there. Tiari Jennings getting things started. You can see the outfield is way shifted over. And despite the fact that Tiari Jennings is a little bit of an inside pitch, she finds a way to stay inside of it and just spray this into right field for a double, which would have otherwise been a single. She leads this team in doubles, her 16th of the season. And that brings us to Jocelyn Allo who is one of three finalists for the National Player of the Year. 27 home runs on the season. First in the nation. It's just so tough the way Patty Gasso sets up her lineup to put Tiare Jennings at the top and then to follow it up in the two spot with Jocelyn Allo. You have two of the best home run hitting players in the country and you really can't walk them early in the game because they're batting one two. Oh, the Big 12 Player of the Year, a two-time All-American. First strike delivered to Olo. There's her dad, Levi, in the stands. Oh, so there was there was an illegal pitch, I believe. So they just changed the count to 3-0. So Larry Heinlein is going to come out and talk to, it was the umpire at third base, Chad Steers, is who he's speaking with. So three balls to Jocelyn Allo with Jennings at second. Take the free pass. Twenty-ninth time she's walked this season. And the damage just keeps on coming because Kinsey Hansen is a dangerous threat at the plate. She was incredible in the Big 12 tournament. 
was not named to any Big 12 postseason award list and took it personally. Yeah, hearing from Coach Patty Gasso, she said, don't worry about it. Keep your blinders on. Don't worry about what people choose of you or don't select you. But she said, no, it bothered me. I want to prove that I belong on that list. And what does she do? She goes and hits five home runs and six at-bats at the Big 12 tournament. And then Patty Gasso thought to herself, well, hey, you know, maybe this is what motivates her. <laughs> it might work for Kinsey Hansen. Yeah, she had gone 18 games before that without a home run and then smashed five of them in those three games. Right past Yule at second. Runner coming around home and Oklahoma is on the board. So once again, you can see that Morgan State's trying to have these Oklahoma players hit into the shift. See, Kinsey Hansen gets a little bit of an inside pitch. She actually gets jammed up, but because she gets jammed, you can see first baseman's all the way playing almost where a second baseman belongs. And because she hits into the shift, it allows a run to score, which would have otherwise been a routine out for the Sooners. So Hansen gets that RBI single. She advances to second. Allo's at third for Grace Lyons, the shortstop. First pitch strike delivered by Runlet. And you can see Morgan State's trying to be intelligent. They're trying to be smart and play the Sooners. Put on the shift, assuming that they're going to hit the ball in the direction that's pitched, but it's hurting them right now. I think what you would have seen is a single from T.R.A. Jennings, and you would have seen a routine out from Kinsey Hansen, and instead it led to a double and a run. Lions goes by. The throw's off the mark. Two-run score. Hansen is at second. Oklahoma Sooners putting pressure on the defense today. They're making Morgan State make quick decisions. They go with the squeeze play here. Really nicely executed by Lyons as the pitch up in the zone. They have no chance for the play at first. Excuse me, the play at home. And then it's a rushed play at first. You can see the frustration from Morgan State. Again, something you're not used to. Oklahoma, known for hitting the long ball, being that powerful home run hitting team. And what do they do in the first inning against you? They call a squeeze play. That just shows how good the Sooners are. So it's Grace Lyons, of course, at second right now. A couple of runs come across thanks to her bat. And it brings us to another outstanding freshman. They let off with Jennings. And here's Jada Coleman, who has been great for them in center field and at the plate, hitting 477. So they are going to rule that a throwing error that allowed Grace Lyons to reach E1, and then she advanced to second, gets a couple of RBI. Oh. Oklahoma has only lost twice this season, once to Georgia, once to Oklahoma State. I mean, you see why already this lineup is so dangerous at every position, and like you said, Kayla, it's not just smashing balls over the fence. Coming, this Oklahoma Sooners team is just so good at hitting the home run ball. The number one team in the country. This is their 131st home run on the season. Jada Coleman 
who has seven on the season, decides, hey, we haven't hit a home run this first inning in postseason play. I'll take one for number eight on the season. Picks up a, a two-run bomb to really make a dent here in the first inning. Oklahoma has now hit a home run in 45 of 48 games this season. That's their 131st home run, and it comes off the bat of a talented freshman, Jada Coleman. You know, Jada Coleman, just one of those standout freshmen, one of the standout hitters in this lineup. And this is what's so scary and why they're the number one team. As you watch them, they pass the eye test. Almost every single hitter in the entire lineup just looks ready to go. They look athletic. They have beautiful swings. And their approach at the plate is so consistent. I think you can see that their mentality, their communication is really what sets them apart. And yeah, we're going to have a pitching change for Morgan State. Melissa, or excuse me, yes, Melissa Paz will come into the circle to relieve Stephanie Runlet. Morgan State's just trying to go for a little bit of a different pace here. Morgan Paw is known for being a very spinny pitcher, doesn't throw with much velocity, so it's going to be an adjustment for the Oklahoma for the first few batters. And like I said, she's really all spin, throws in the mid-50s, still throwing the drop curve pretty often, but again, it's all about spin and location for her. She's not going to blow it by anybody, but it's an opportunity for the Sooners to have to sit on something a little bit slower. Taylor Snow will be the first to see Melissa Paz, but we know how quickly Oklahoma can make those adjustments. Last year was the first season at Oklahoma for Taylor Snow. Played a couple of seasons at Auburn. Started for them, was a member of the SEC All Freshman team. <laughs> Bouncing ball to center off of the glove of Yule. It'll be two bags for Taylor Snow. Sooners have done a really nice job of catching Morgan State on their heels. You can see right there. Taylor Snow getting an opportunity to take an extra base when she sees this really great effort by Yule. Tips off her glove, but because nobody's there quickly to recover that ball on the tip play, Taylor Snow sees it right away and picks up two. Her eighth double of the season, still no outs with Mackenzie Donahue, Donahue at the plate. Change of speeds, but won't get the call. You heard the crowd. They're not booing. They're saying Lou. They call her Lou, like Donahue. Hey. Oklahoma's numbers are just unbelievable outscoring opponents 531 to 80 the top three hitters have more home runs than 12 d1 teams i mean they're ridiculous when you really look at it and when you really see it on paper they're averaging 11 runs per game now i will say this they've been knocked this season for playing a weaker strength of schedule 
but this is their opportunity to prove everyone that doubted their schedule, that doubted how inflated their numbers were. This is the time where it doesn't really matter what the numbers are. It's about coming and being prepared to play the best and win. And Oklahoma's looking to do that regardless of what everybody else is saying. job with the change of speeds right here. See, it's a little curveball. This is that off-speed curve. It's moving away. It clips the outside corner and a big strikeout to get the first out of the inning. All right, just the first out as we get set for the number eight hitter, Jana Johns, the transfer from South Carolina with a runner in scoring position. Jana Johns has been an addition too. She brings some power with her bat, but also great energy to this team. I mean, Patty Gasso just has a loaded roster. I think that's what's been impressive too about Patty Gasso's ability to not only recruit incredible talent, but to see where she has some holes in her lineup or defensively, and then she goes out and gets some big-time transfers that fill in those gaps. Jana Johns being one of those, getting a start at third base and finding a spot in their lineup. Yeah, some of those transfers who are starting. Shannon Sale, we've seen her in the circle numerous times. Taylor Snow just had a double. Jana Johns is at the plate, and G. Juarez is pitching in this game. All really big factors on their starting lineups and important pieces to their success. Oh, right back at pause. Everyone's safe, runners on the corners. Quick reaction here by pause. Jana Johns hits this hard right back at her. Almost is able to catch this ball. But what a quick reaction to be able to get her glove up and keep that in the infield because that's a run if she doesn't knock that down. So now the number nine hitter here in the bottom of the first. Still just one out. Nicole Mendez will get a look at Melissa Paz. We've already seen a pitching change in this inning for Morgan State. Mendez named to that Women's College World Series All-Tournament team in 2017 and 2019 was the 2017 Big 12 Freshman of the Year. Looking to get the runner going. Everybody good. Two in scoring position and the fifth steal of the season for Jana Johns. So this Oklahoma team just seeing opportunities and taking advantage. And that's what's tough is for a team like Morgan State that comes in and hasn't played the caliber of team like in Oklahoma. You just find yourself on your heels very often. And if Oklahoma sees that, they're going to take advantage and they're going to jump all over you. And they've done that in the first inning. And you know what? They've done that to most of the teams that they've played this season whether it's Big 12 opponents or out-of-conference opponents. You saw, though, that moment for... Oklahoma has just had an incredible season. I mean, not just nationally program records, batting average runs, on-base percentage, slugging percentage. That's all those numbers coming into this regional. Oh. Run will score off the bat of Mendez as she's thrown out at first.
Back to the top of the order. Oklahoma batting around. Tiare Jennings. She had a double to start the game. And I really got things going and didn't have a, an exactly a solid piece of hitting, but just sprayed a ball to the opposite field. And you can see right now they've changed the shift. They've taken the shift off, which they tried to use earlier in this game. And I think a big piece of that is who you're seeing in the circle. Melissa Paz just doesn't throw as hard. With that change of speed, it's going to be more likely that the players pull the ball, despite the fact that it's outside, whatever it may be. You see the accolades there from T.R.A. Jennings. Just been so impressed with her ability to step into the college game and just look like a professional. Yeah, she's handled herself really well. It's got to help, too, to have so much experience and knowledge around her, though, in this lineup. <laughs> Jennings, one of those top ten finalists for the USA Softball Player of the Year. Of course, that's been narrowed to three, but she was one of two freshmen to make that list. Nothing phases her. She is always cool, calm, and collected in the box. That's impressive at this level. It stays fair. She's got an RBI and another double. Two doubles in the inning. Yeah, Oklahoma batting around, and you can see Tiare just yanks down, yanks on this ball down the line. And that's that speed change, a little off-speed from pause. And Tiare Jennings is a little bit out in front, but still finds a way to keep this ball fair, to square it up and hit it hard enough to pick up the double. Jennings started this game with a double. Now she's got an RBI double. As Oklahoma has batted around, brings us to Jocelyn Allo, who walked. Good, good There's Grandma Nita. That is Jocelyn's grandmother. Huge softball fan. I loved hearing from Jocelyn Allo just how her grandma also likes to match the team, whatever they're wearing, depending on what uniform combo they're going with, if she wants to match. Doesn't today. She's wearing the red top with the white unis, so maybe a little miscommunication there, but I hear for the most <laughs> part she likes, to, she, she likes to wear what the team's wearing. She's still got that crimson and cream on. She's good to go. That's all that matters, right? Jocelyn was talking about her dad, Levi, who you saw in the stands. It's been so incredible, she says, just to talk about, like, her dreams coming true with him, to see everything, all of that hard work that they thought about when, you know, she was playing ball and travel ball and in high school, and, and here she is playing for Oklahoma. And I love that she's from Hawaii. I mean, that's such a a far removed location from Oklahoma. It's so hard to get scouted when you're literally on an island. So such an impressive talent to see that and for Patty Yasso to see that earlier in her career and say, this girl is good. I want her on my team. She had a Oklahoma record 40 game hit streak earlier in the season. At one point tied an NCAA record with seven straight games with a home run this year. I mean, it's been crazy. You walk her and then you get back to Kenzie Hansen who had an RBI single earlier in this inning.
Hansen is the 12th Sooner to bat here in the first. We saw Stephanie Runlet get the start in the circle for Morgan State, and Melissa Paz relieved her after five batters. And Hansen pops up to Yule. We got a home run, though, and it's from a freshman. Oklahoma Sooners showing us their power. See, Jada Coleman in her eighth of the season. Sooners up big. Yeah, Haley Bobos is going to lead off this inning. She told us the best part actually was watching the younger girls gel with this team and learn from their older teammates so that they could make history this year. Yeah, team chemistry is just so important. And it's so important when you have new players, newcomers on your team, just fit into the puzzle pieces that you're missing and create this really good consistency uh, among your team and gelling together. And there's so much of that that goes into winning and being successful. We see that from teams like Oklahoma, but also from teams like Morgan State that win their league, win their conference tournament, and make it to the postseason. Bobos pops up, but it'll hit the netting. Yeah, that was just the second time that they had reached the MIAC tournament final. The first time since 1999, and they were able to take down NC Central 10-5 to in that championship game. Came into this one having won nine of their last 11 games. They also faced some adversity in the beginning of the season. They had four of their weekends early on canceled from COVID, and they found a way to fight through that resiliency, to fight through cancellations and postponements, and still find a way to gain some consistency and play really well down the stretch. Jenna Johns makes the play at third. Well, Larry Highline is in his seventh season with this Morgan State program. He was the MEAC tournament outstanding coach. And when he took over this program, he had a couple of goals in mind. One was improving on defense, good, aggressive base running. They drill that a lot. And then he wanted to up their pitching. And he feels like he's done that all with this current Morgan State squad. Melissa Paz has a hit. Morgan Paz, great job jumping all over the first pitch. Getting a strike in her wheelhouse, squares it up. Really short to the ball, great contact right up the middle. Get the first base runner aboard for Morgan State. Demisha Charles goes foul. Transferred in from Dayton State. Originally from the Netherlands. G. Juarez ahead 0-2 on Charles. Third strikeout tonight for Juarez. G. Juarez coming upstairs on this little rise ball that just climbs the ladder enough to get Charles swing and miss. And that's where G's really effective. When she gets ahead early in the count, hits the corners early low, she can go with that rise ball to get batters to chase up and out of the zone. Mikkel Turner up. They've got a base runner on. Melissa Paz had that single. Turner, a senior. She's had hits in four of her last six appearances. Or 
Ramirez started this game with three pitches to the leadoff batter. All three were strikes. Got her swinging. And I thought it was interesting that Patty Gasso went with G. Juarez to start tonight's game. I thought we might see the freshman Nicole May save G. Juarez for later in this tournament, but I think it shows the confidence that they have in Shannon Sale. She's been incredible this year. And she used to be a reliever, but now this year she's 16-0. She comes in with a 1.54 ERA, just a little bit above G. Juarez. I think she's kind of moving into that really true ace position for the Sooners. Uh, first team all Big 12 selection. Guaranteed we will see her this weekend. Back to back K's for G. G. Juarez going with that rise ball once again. Gets a big swing and a miss. Sooners coming up to bat again. Reckoning with, reckoned with, drawing all that attention in and, and making it really easy to recruit to Oklahoma. I mean, between her and Kaylani Ricketts, Jessica Schultz, just some really incredible players that got things started on that 2013 team. Ever since then, it has just been able to boost the players and the caliber of talent that they get in to Norman. Grace Lyons liked that pitch, takes it to left for a single. Oklahoma batted around in the first inning. Grace Lyons does a good job of going downstairs, almost kind of golfing this one, low in the zone. Stays through it just enough to pop off Delph's glove at, sec at shortstop. Get another leadoff hit with the Sooners. Brings us to Jada Coleman with a runner on. Had a two-run homer in the first. That one got behind her, and she'll take her base. I'm surprised Jada Coleman right there. Just gets away from Melissa Paws. That barely clips Coleman right in the back. Looks like her left arm as it kind of scrapes behind her. She's all smiles, though. Wow, 11 of 14 batters for Oklahoma have reached now, and we're in the bottom of the second. Taylor Snow to the wall! Another run across Taylor Snow! This is really nice timing from Taylor so Snow. You know Paws is not throwing very hard with much velocity. So Taylor Snow is able to stay in her leg, stay behind this, time it up perfectly to hit a nice little double off the wall. Her second double tonight. That's two players for Oklahoma with two doubles in this game. Jennings is the other. And I think we're going to have another pitching change for Morgan State. And Sarah Tuzinski, number 32, comes into the circle. Oklahoma already up 8 nothing. Yeah, and they're getting the fans into it. And now we're at the potential for full capacity at these stadiums here in the postseason. And the Sooners know what an advantage is it is to be playing at home and have the fans at your back. And trying to get the crowd riled up a little bit. I mean, it's eight to nothing already, but they know what an important factor these fans are heading into tomorrow and the following day of this tournament. And down the stretch, they come out of this region, they'll host their super regional at home as well, being the one seed. And they want everybody to pack the park in Norman. Yeah, they will face the winner of the Seattle regional, so. If it goes chalk, I mean, you could have an Oklahoma-Washington super, which is more like a World Series matchup. Yeah, I think everybody's pretty shocked to see Washington in that 16 seed committee. Didn't give them the respect that they thought they deserved. Didn't value their strength of schedule as much because it was a little bit lower. 
they had some bad losses throughout the season. But man, you talk about Gabby Plain potentially going against the Sooners for a trip to the Women's College World Series. I mean, that is a super regional I want to watch. Absolutely. So Mackenzie Donahue will be the first to face Sarah Tuzinski. Oklahoma already has eight hits, four doubles, and a home run. Sarah Tuzinski coming in for Morgan State, and she's going to throw mid to high 50s again. Not much velocity, but she really likes how to screw ball up and in. Going to try and hit it right under the hands of these Oklahoma hitters. But the key is she's got to keep it low enough and in on the hands enough to get called for a strike early so she can get that chase pitch later in the count. As you see, she's behind 3-0. and And she'll walk the first batter she'll face, and that loads the bases for Jana Johns. Number 20, Jana Johns. Jana came into this game only hitting 188 over her last six games, but singled and had a run scored and stole a base in the first. Skies it in foul territory. Demisa Charles makes the grab. That's the first out. And that's where that pitch right there from Tuzinski can be effective as you get up and on the hands. You get Jana Johns, who's a little too excited on that pitch. Could have been more patient after seeing a four pitch walk to Donahue. Sag gets a little anxious and, and gets beat on that pitch up and in. Nicole Mendez in the nine spot. Bases loaded. Oklahoma came into this game hitting 428 with runners in scoring position. 43% of their hits have been with runners in scoring position this season. I mean, there's so many stats time and time again, Courtney, where you just you look at it and you say, wow, how is that possible? And it's such a credit to this entire lineup, one through nine, and their ability to keep things going, to keep the rally going, and to use the momentum and pass it on to their teammates. And that was something else that was so important that Patty Gasso talked about, is how good their communication, player to player, is in the dugout. Mendez crushed it! A great Nicole Mendez gets all of this ball. And this is something that you see when you watch the Sooners play. They get in there and they take their hacks. I mean, she puts a swing on this. It's an elevated ball up in the zone. She meets it. And she puts everything into the swing. Look at the power that she gets from her body, the aggressiveness on her hips to be able to turn into this one and hit it way out of the park. The eighth grand slam of the season for Oklahoma. And I think the second for Mendez. When you look at this Sooner team and you see what they're able to do collectively, it's because individually they just put really, really quality swings on good pitches all the time. They don't miss by much. They hit barrel a lot. And they just don't get cheated at the plate. You hardly, hardly see them look like they're confused at the plate, like they're hesitant at the plate. They're not ready to go. And then to add the power, athleticism, and the beautiful swings that most of them have, I mean, that's how you get big power numbers. 
know, we were asking Patty Gasso, when you're recruiting these women, what are you looking for that you know they can be a hitter like this or that they are? And she talked about the strength and, ha and having good levers with your legs and your core, but then also that coolness at the plate. Jennings gets past Delph at shortstop. But that calmness where you can adapt to each pitch, you don't get flustered when you strike out, that's going to help you and helps the rest of your teammates when you come back to the dugout. Oh, without a doubt. And you can tell the composure of this team is so good, too. And we talked about communication as well, Courtney. When they go back to the dugout, whether they fail or succeed, they're constantly talking to each other, constantly relaying information. What was my plan? What was our approach? What was I looking for? What did I see? And letting themselves almost be like coaches to one another. Jocelyn Allo flies out to right. Yeah, Patty Yasso told us, I wish she had a microphone that you could listen in to them. I would love to do that. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's get them. Yeah. I'd love to hear that. I want to be in on that conversation. I asked her if this is the best team communication-wise she has, and she thought so. She wasn't sure if she's just noticing it more, but she has been super impressed with that passing of information in her dugout. She says every time she looks in the dugout, they're just constantly chatting with each other about the game. She said, of course, they're cheering, but there's also this focus that they have to make sure that they're all prepared when they go to the plate. for Yule out in right field. Lindsay Hansen hits this hard on the hard on the barrel to the opposite field. You can see Yule cuts over and then takes an angle back and just barely misses it. Doesn't get the best read and because of that lets that ball get by her. Six of Oklahoma's nine hitters already have an RBI tonight. Second time Jada Coleman's been up in this inning. Lyons was digging for it. Lyons, a couple of RBI in the first. She reached on an error. And then a single in the second earlier in this inning. Grace Lyons, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, a first team all Big 12 selection. Last seven games, came into this game hitting 381 with a couple of doubles, a couple of RBI. Lyons lifts it, but not far enough, and Young makes the grab for out number three. The grand slam from Nicole Mendez to really cap things off. This is the most runs 
that they've scored in an NCAA tournament game since 2014 when they put up 14 against Bryant in the opening round. And you know, for me, I look at this, and obviously it's a lopsided score, but what that tells me is that Oklahoma came ready to play. They respected the opponent in the opposing dugout, and they were not going to take it easy on Morgan State and let an opportunity go to waste. And that's the key to a good team. You've got to get out there and play your best, no matter what the situation is, no matter who the opponent is, whether you're the one seed or not. You have to go out there and make sure you're playing at the level that you need to to be consistent to go on a national championship run. John Young is leading off this inning for Morgan State. She's a senior, but not unfamiliar with this Morgan State program. Her family has a couple of ties to the Morgan State Bears. Of course, her sister, Doms, is a volunteer assistant her, in her second season with Morgan State. It was the 2019 MEAC Player of the Year. And that'll be the first walk of the night for G. Juarez. Hitting in the ninth spot. Well, the Women's College World Series is returning to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday, June 3rd at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. For more information on the 2021 Women's College World Series, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And we got word today that the World Series is going to be a packed house. They're allowing full capacity for Oklahoma City. So really exciting that the fans, after missing that postseason experience yesterday, are going to get to see the Women's College World Series live in person. That's so cool. Of course, we got full capacity here in Norman, too to see the number one team in this tournament, Oklahoma. Yeah, and you love to the see the fans. Series. Yeah, you love to see the fans in the stands. It's such an important factor of playing and one of the best parts about getting to be a college softball player at this level. Fifth strikeout for Juarez. Yeah, that's part of the thing that makes Oklahoma City so special are the fans. I mean, you just go and spend the week, and it's amazing softball. Why would you not want to be there? It's incredible. It's an incredible atmosphere. It's one of those memories that you don't forget, whether you're in the stands or playing on the field. They get her in time. What a hustle play from the Oklahoma defense. I like the attempt here from Mia Yule to try and put pressure on Oklahoma, but Oklahoma, second best defense in the entire country, and it's Shanna Johns who's able to make the throw on the run, fields this on the hop, gets rid of it quickly enough, off balance, and still throws a strike for the second out of the inning. This Oklahoma defense, Patty Gasso told us they take as much pride in their offense as they do in their defense. Only 15 errors on the season, fourth in the nation in fielding percentage. They've only had two games where they've had multiple errors all season. <laughs> Aaliyah Yule and Grace Lyons has no problem with it. Oklahoma rocking a big lead here in their first regional game. Zona, in that first game, 
They hit three home runs in a row. And that's against Arizona, who is a good team, a national seed in this tournament. Yeah, UCLA is a, another scary lineup. One through nine can do a ton of damage, and it helps to have somebody like a Rachel Garcia that helps herself out in the pitcher's circle by being an incredible hitter. And, you know, we obviously know the talent of UCLA, but you got to give crush credit to Jocelyn Allo because not only is she leading the country in home runs with 27, but she's batting 479 coming into today's game. I mean, to be able to be that consistent with that much power is just so impressive. And it just shows her versatility at the plate. She doesn't just go up there and swing freely, and because she's so strong, the ball just magically goes out. She has good at bats, quality at bats, and she doesn't waste her swings by putting bad swings on bad pitches. Jada Coleman will walk to start the third inning for Oklahoma. Yeah, Allo is such a smart player, and she's passing along that knowledge, too. She's helping bring up the freshmen like Jada Coleman and Jennings, who are just willing to take in that information. I mean, what a luxury that is to have a player like that. Lindsay Elam goes to the wall. And it's a double for her in a pinch hit roll. Two in scoring position just like that for Oklahoma. And Jolyon Young out in center field came up a little funny. She's limping a little bit out there. Yeah, she's got a smile on her face, but you can tell she's trying to work out something that she might have aggravated a little bit on that last play. Riley Boone now hitting for Oklahoma. Sooners have tied their season high with six doubles in this game. to center. Runner's going to come home. Sack fly for Riley Boone. Coming in this ball game, we've just seen, obviously, you look at the numbers from Oklahoma, and it's all home run numbers. That's the first thing that you notice when you see their talent level. However, I think tonight they've done a good job of executing. They've hit six doubles, like you said. They've executed on a sack fly. They've gotten a squeeze bunt down that scored a run early in this ball game. So they're just showing you that they're a little bit more versatile than just hitting the long ball. It's going to be Grace Green pinch hitting as Patty Gasso going to her very talented bench. Grace Green had a pinch hit grand slam against Wichita State and Oklahoma looks like it's on a path to facing Wichita State tomorrow. Wichita State beat Texas A&M in the first game of the regional, 9-7. to They'll get the winner of this one. You know, Wichita State showed us how powerful and potent their offense is as well. Put up nine runs against Texas A&M. Two big home runs from Madison Perrigan. And this is an Oklahoma team that played the Wichita State Shockers back on May 4th. Ended up winning 14-3, to but you kind of get the feeling that Wichita State understands what it was like playing Oklahoma for the first time, and they're hoping to have a better showing tomorrow. Oh, and a miscommunication. The ball is dropped. Another run will score for Oklahoma. Now three players over there for Morgan State, but nobody came up with the ball. This is without a doubt the left fielder Turner's ball. 
automatically. She doesn't get the best read off the bat. And because of that, the communication falls apart. Nobody really calls it with any kind of uh, clearance or cadence or <laughs> any kind of clarity in their voice. And because of that, it, it just opens the door for another run across the plate for the Sooners. And they give Green the double. She'll get an RBI off of it. And back to Nicole Mendez, who had a grand slam in the second. Slam was her second of the season, third of her career. Mendez has seen the ball so well tonight. You can tell her timing is on. She's so explosive when she turns on this ball on the outside corner, but because she stays in her legs, because she has a ton of drive from her back left leg, you can see right there, this ball sails out of park for home run number two. Her ninth home run on the season. She has accounted for seven RBI tonight. And Oklahoma rocking and rolling at home in Norman. And this is what the crowd comes to see. They want the long ball. They love the big hits. And I got to be honest with you, they want to see their team dominate. They want this to be 17 to nothing to show that the Sooners take care of business and beat a team of the way that they should based upon how they've played this entire season. And so we're going to see another pitching change for Morgan State as Emily Robo comes in, a freshman for the Bears. It'll be the fourth pitcher they've used tonight. Well, we've already seen one team advance in this regional. Wichita State gave us a great game against Texas A&M in our first game of the regional earlier this evening. They won 9-7, to seven, so they stay in that winner's portion of the bracket. Texas A&M not done, of course. They'll play an elimination game tomorrow at 6.30 Eastern. Wichita State looks like they're on the course to face Oklahoma. It was just exciting when we got this regional because you knew the power. I mean, it's not just Oklahoma who can hit home runs. Wichita State is second in the nation in home runs, and we saw them crush two today. Yeah, we've seen six home runs already in the first two games of this regional, and that's what we all came here for. It's to see the big swings, the big home runs, and these teams are delivering. Yeah, you see five of the nine players. It's now been updated because of those two home runs from Paragon. She's got 20 now, so six of the ten players in the nation are here in this regional that have 20 home runs. It's really crazy when you think about it. I don't, off the top of my head, I can't think of a regional that's had that many of the top home run hitters in one location for a regional tournament. Obviously, well, we're talking about Tiari Jennings, Allo. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> they can sell them all this week. <laughs> Bounces it off the wall. Gary Jennings just laces this ball to the opposite field. I mean, this was a laser 
does a good job of staying back, staying in her legs, being able to keep her barrel angled towards the opposite field and shoot this one off the wall for another double. It's her third double of the day. Oklahoma's got a school record eight doubles in this game. The 18th for Jennings. with you, Courtney. I'm watching that, and that was a swing of beauty right there. I mean, it looked like she took that off of the tee. Like, perfect mechanics, beautiful timing. This is why Jocelyn Allo is up for one of the best players of the year. I mean, her extension, just her athleticism as she's able to hit this ball. You can see her body so centered. Her weight is perfectly divided, and she crushes this one deep into the night. She is now just two home runs away from tying the Oklahoma single season record, which she and Lauren Chamberlain set with 30 on the season. That's saying a lot. You know, Lauren Chamberlain, one of the best home run hitters of all time, and here Jocelyn Allo is trying to make a name for herself and put herself in the record books. But man, that was a thing of beauty right there. Nineteen runs for Oklahoma tonight. Seven runs in the first inning, six in each of the last two innings. And they're rocking out in the dugout. Jocelyn Allo has a home run in more games than she does not have a home run. <laughs> That's such an incredible stat to not slump, to not go through any phases of not seeing the ball as well as she does. I mean, you can hear it off the bat. It just sounds different. I mean, that thing is smoked. Kenzie Hansen up with one out. By the way, the record for Oklahoma in an NCAA tournament game is 21 runs. That was against Arkansas in 2009. There's two outs. Lions to center and Oklahoma up by 19. We will talk to Morgan State head coach Larry Heinlein when we come back. But what a home run from Jocelyn Allo. She's putting on a clinic, a beautiful swing, perfectly hit, just an absolute bomb to finish off the inning. So cool. Morgan State is one of six teams making their appearance for the very first time in this NCAA championship. Of course, they joined Clemson, Duke, George Washington, South Dakota State, and Villanova in that category. It's really impressive how we've seen some of these new teams flourish. You talk about Clemson and Duke. They've been around for such a short amount of time, and here you have Clemson winning the a the ACC championship regular season, and then Duke going on to win a, win the tournament. I mean, very quick rises for both of those programs, and I, I think that shows the dedication that you're seeing across the country 
to not only women's athletics, but softball specifically, because it's a sport that's growing. The audience loves it, and it should be recognized and be in a lot of these universities. Yeah, I mean, you can just tell by how many people are walk coming to watch this game right now in the stands. First time we've had full capacity this season. OU softball complex is popping, and they've gotten some amazing players to watch from this Oklahoma team. Drop third strike. Ellen Ebers is out. Haley Bobos is one of those seniors that Coach Heinlein talked about, came back for the program. And you've seen her try to take on that leadership role in a tough situation. I mean, obviously, this is not the score they want. But she has been out there talking to her teammates. She's had that positive look on her face. You've seen a smile on her face. She's trying to set the tone and keep this Morgan State team in it. Well, it's so important, too, for this Morgan State team is recognizing that it's a double elimination tournament. They got to go play tomorrow. So, yes, they're having a tough game against Oklahoma, but they have to find ways to gain momentum, to put things in play, to give them an opportunity to fight back tomorrow and have a chance to stay in this tournament a little bit longer. You see the standing ovation as G. Juarez exits the game. Six strikeouts for her and a new pitcher in the circle, Olivia Reigns, a sophomore right-hander, will take over. launched out for it. Really nice change up from Olivia Reigns. Low in the zone. Bobos had no chance to be able to catch up to this pitch or wait on it, I should say, because of the off speed, because of the spin. That was a really beautiful looking off speed for Reigns right there. And then she sends in a first pitch strike that was too good for Paz to pass up. <laughs> and another effective off speed at the knees. Pitch looks so good out of the hands, and then about halfway you recognize that it's a little slower and then it's too late. The Oklahoma staff strikes out the side. Oklahoma just rocking. They're up 19 to nothing on Morgan State. And we're joined now by Sooner head coach Patty Gasso. Coach, we just saw Jocelyn Allo with a beautiful home run swing. What makes her such a smart hitter? Uh, patience and uh, just trust in what she has a plan every time she comes to the plate. You could see that. 
She doesn't like to waste her swings. She's very particular. Sticks with her plan, and power comes with it. Coach, looking towards tomorrow, you play Wichita State. What do you expect to see out of that matchup? We played them earlier. Um, there's a lot. There's going to be a lot of offense. It's going to be. Um, you're going to have to play good defense. Keep the ball in the yard the best you can. It's going to be a good matchup. Uh, we always have very good matchups with Wichita State. Top two home run hitting teams in the nation. Thank you, Coach. We right. appreciate your time. Thanks, you guys. Lead nice and strong. Jada Coleman leading off against Emily Robo, who is the fourth pitcher that Morgan State has used. Coleman's an interesting story. Played shortstop in high school, but is left-handed. And she told Patty Gasso she was going to make history, be the first left-handed shortstop. And Coach Gasso said, mm, maybe not. <laughs> Coach said, whatever's best for the team. And I think that was the nod to say, hey, we're going to take a right-handed shortstop, especially somebody as good as Grace Lyons is. But Jada Coleman was like, hey, at some point, one game, at some point, you're going to need me there, and you're going to play me there. <laughs> yeah, she's brought a lot of energy, though. I mean, it just has so much confidence. I think the thing that's impressive, too, is that at first, Patty Gasso said, you know, she wasn't afraid to ask why, like ask questions. But now she's answering those questions. Beat it. You know, talking to all of her teammates, Shada Coleman, it just has this energy about her. It's infectious. She leaves everything on her sleeves when she plays. You can see she hustles down the line to barely beat this ball out. It's a good effort over there by Mia Yule. But I think it's the right call just by an inch. Jada Coleman is safe. Again, Jada Coleman is a player that you have to watch we hear that opponents tend to not like her as much just because she's so energetic. She is so emotional when she plays. She doesn't hide much. But as her teammate, they absolutely love her for that. Yeah, she's dangerous on the base paths, too. As Lindsay Elam is up, they'll have to keep an eye on Coleman over at first. But Jocelyn Allo told us that I said, well, I asked her about Jada. What, what comes to mind? Well, she's crazy, but in a good way. <laughs> One away. Next up for the centers. A fielder number zero. Riley Boone. Here's Riley Boone again. Had the sack fly in the third, got herself an RBI. Oklahoma most likely moving on to face Wichita State tomorrow. It is a double elimination tournament. So Morgan State will have to win a couple times tomorrow.
and Delph is under it. Two away. And two nice little pop-ups right there. Easy on the defense. The most efficient in inning that we've seen from Morgan State so far. So we'll see Zeta Puni come up for the first time. Hitting 333 on the season. Has four hits, six RBI. Oklahoma started off this game with a bang. They batted around, scored seven runs in the first inning. Six runs in the next two. And it drops foul. You can see why Oklahoma's only had two losses on the season to Georgia. The other one to Oklahoma State. They've taken away something from both of those to make them even better. And anybody can get a hit in this lineup. Yeah, what's been impressive, too, is both of those losses were tough losses for Oklahoma. They recognized that they did not come to play. And we talked to Patty Gasso. She said, Georgia just flat out beat us. But I think what you see, the value in those losses is how does Oklahoma respond, especially when you look at the postseason. You know, her mentality in Big 12 season was to think of every weekend like a super regional. How can you win two out of three? Because from here on out, everything's double elimination. So if you can learn how to win two out of three games, stay away from teams beating you you're going to have an opportunity to potentially win a national championship. So that's that mentality is using those couple losses, very few that there are, and finding a way to spin them to something positive and learn something down the stretch for postseason. Yeah, and so now that mentality is ingrained in them. They come into this first regional game, and it's it's nothing new. It's still that pressure, and the pressure's even bigger in their Big 12 conference tournament because it was, you know, lose once and you're done. And this is an Oklahoma team, and Patty Yasso is used to having the pressure, having a big target on the, on their back. And they know that when they go face teams like an Oklahoma State, like a Georgia, that those teams are on a mission to beat the number one team. She said when they beat Georgia, they were all over Sports Center. It ended this huge streak. It got a lot of attention, and she kind of loved that. She said it's what softball deserves is getting that attention. But we also had to bounce back. Kelso and the grab is made by Delph. Going to the top of the fifth. OU trying to close things out. The confidence from Wichita State and Madison Perrigan. They know who Oklahoma is. You look at this team, and there is no doubt in your mind that they're going to be the, one of the best opponents that you play in your entire career, one of the best opponents that anybody will face in the college softball level. And, you know, she said, we're not scared. Yeah, she said they are ready for it. And they've already faced them once. Yeah, and it, there was a tough expectation of when they were in the selection show, watching the selection show, they thought they were going to be sent to maybe an Oklahoma State, Arkansas, Missouri. 
another team in that region. But when the first seed popped up and it's Oklahoma and Wichita State saw their name, there was a little bit of a shock. Of course, that's what you get when you see Oklahoma next to your name. But after that period of shock and a little bit of surprise, they rebounded and they said, you know what? If you want to be in the World Series and you want to get to that caliber and get to Super Regionals, you got to beat the best teams out there. And hey, you get the best, so you might as well show up and be ready to go. It's Nicole May in the circle for Oklahoma. Sooners three outs away from that game against Wichita State tomorrow. Oklahoma's been setting season records. How about NCAA tournament records? Eight doubles tonight. That is an NCAA postseason record, not just OU. I mean, I'm not shocked by that record being set tonight just because this team feels like they're going to set records across the board. I mean, the strength of their entire offense and their ability to be so versatile to yes hit the long ball but to be able to do everything else power to the gaps stringing hits together I mean it's been cool to see one away And there's not many weaknesses, if any, on this Oklahoma team. They're a solid defensive team. They spend a lot of time on that, too. But also, obviously, the power numbers are there. You know what's interesting? In their two losses this season, they've had to score a lot of runs. They were high-scoring games where the opposing team jumped over, all over the pitching staff for Oklahoma. So if you want to talk about their strengths, I think it's hitting first, fielding second, pitching third, and that's not to say that they have a weak pitching staff. It's just not as strong as their defense and their offense. So I think you kind of go in with the expectation. If you want to beat the Sooners down the road, you have to put up runs. So I look at some of the more potent offenses across the country, like a UCLA. Those are the teams that I circle that have an opportunity to potentially beat Sooners down the road. <laughs> you can see it right there. Run. Yeah, I mean, their ERA is still 10th in the country. <laughs> and, and, you know, Michelle Smith said it, I think, a few weeks ago, I believe. She talked about their offense just being like a, another pitcher. <laughs> That's how good their offense is. Strikeout for Nicole May. Center fielder number one, Jolly and Young. Jolene Young behind 0-2 to Nicole May.
What a statement for Oklahoma. 19 runs in their opening game of the tournament. Oklahoma comes in and they absolutely take care of business. 18 hits, 19 runs. They showcase their power. They showcase their ability to score runs with sack flies, with the squeeze play. They great on the bases and they had a solid pitching performance from all three pitchers tonight. Yeah, 10 strikeouts for the OU pitching staff. Nicole Mendez had not one, but two home runs. One of those, a grand slam. Getting it done in the nine spot, Nicole Mendez showed us her power. Such a aggressive swing. She was hacking up there, and she hit a couple deep home runs to give this Oklahoma Sooner offense a big boost in the game. Yeah, she is our Capital One player of the game. Oklahoma comes out and blows past Morgan State 19 to nothing. Not a big surprise that we will see them in the winner's portion of our regional bracket. They will take on Wichita State tomorrow at 4 Eastern. Morgan State and Texas A&M, they're not done. They're going to have to win twice tomorrow to survive and stay alive in this tournament. They'll play approximately 6.30 Eastern tomorrow. Oklahoma comes out and puts on a show in their home opener here in this regional. 19 to nothing. A huge victory for the Sooners.